Hello my beautiful friends, it's your friend Kevin. Today is Saturday the 8th of October 2022 and um, we're going to get right to today's card. I got a special message with this one. It's so weird and I'm going to jump on a quote from my teacher Radley Valentine and say you cannot make this up. I don't think he was the only one that said it but anyway here we go. So Yesterday, I had said to you that the card and the energy of the day was the Water Guardian. Now, many of you know I pull these cards on Sunday for the week coming up. And I keep the cards in a stack in the order that they were pulled in order to do a daily video on each one. No surprising that this morning I opened the deck to see which one was next. And I couldn't understand why the Sunday card was showing up today. So I went through the deck again and I found, lo and behold, that the Water Guardian is actually the card and the influence that I pulled last Sunday that was supposed to be today's reading. However, when I moved it aside, this one was there as the missing card. So I flipped it over and here comes the shaman which in Carl Gray's Angels and Ancestors Oracle deck which we're using um, is one of the sacred ones. An owl on his head, an Indian headdress and basically almost like a gothic type of clock where time is of no consequence in it, with um, all the astrological signs. Uh, what is the, the, the um, runestone signs on the face of the clock? Anyway, the message for today is trust in higher forces. Well, now, why is this one showing up a day later than it would normally be showing up or that I perceived it to show up? And all I'll say about that is that sometimes these messages, through no intention, change around, swap about. And it caused me to learn and understand that the power of the universe is greater and more prolific when we let go of the control of it because truly utterly what I'm understanding from this card and from this week and from all the work I've been doing the control of the outcome the control of the process the control of every single nitty-gritty thing that we try to put into place actually slows it down now for those who are <laughs> A little more spiritually evolved in this lifetime and who have repeated this and who have repeated it and repeated it and repeated it they know the aha moment that happens when you kind of get this concept anyway I'm going to read the message from Kyle Gray's um, Angels and Ancestors Oracle deck so that you get a sense of it and make it your own the message is, trust your angels, your guides, and your ancestors. And if you've given your power away, claim it back. So what is this about? Well, on the inner planes of life and living, the shamans of the times gone by, that's the ones that have ascended, are helping the human race, us in human form, to understand the complexities of life and the needs of Mother Earth, because we're all stewards of Mother Earth while we're here. We really cannot be stewards of Mother Earth when we're in the spiritual form. Many of these spiritual guides are working to light workers and working to help light workers and light warriors. So the shaman card brings the energy of your own shaman guides to you. Now, 
this is a little tiny bit different to your guardian angels, although it could be your guardian angels. Your guardian angels could actually be the messengers from these great shamanic teachers to say this is the way we go. Because guardian angels have been with us our entire existence, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. So during those times when you say to your guardian angel, thank you for being where you've always been and helping me on this journey, I now call forth the ancient uh, wisdom of the shamans to help me understand whatever. And they will bring whatever it is that you need. Now, the shamans believed that when there was illness or disease, it was because a person's power had been left behind somewhere or a negative pattern had installed itself in that person. So it's believed that in trance, shamans would travel to the underworld to recall this power and remove the demon, the darkness, the, the negativity. So if this card comes to you, which it has today, it's because you need to do some release work with lower energies or with your lack of trust and spiritual awareness. The spiritual awareness and the trust is guiding you, but somehow or another, you're not trusting it, not believing it, because there's something attached to that thought and belief that's stopping you. So ask your guardian angel, ask your shaman angels, to aid you in your quest to claim back your power, to clarify your belief in what you think you might be doubting. That's where it shows up for me, the doubt. You know, there are spiritual allies working in our favour and their miracles unfold far more easily when we move into a state of trusting. So, calling back our power and stopping the external forces from diverting the miracles that we so deserve to happen. That would be the people that are doubting Thomases and negative Nancys um, and, you know, all those bullies and people that want to tell you that the world is falling apart. No, it's not. Hand over your concern to your spiritual allies and when you do so, you let them send you intuitive guidance and messages that will allow you to um, correct any situation that comes up. The shaman card allows you to show, allows us really, what you have in that shamanic potential, what we have in the abilities to move between the realms and connect with guides um, in a really, really, really personal way. So what I really think and believe at this point is this card showed up on Saturday because oftentimes, if you're in the Monday to Friday work week, and we, you know, in our Western culture, maybe the world culture, I mean, the whole world, if you're in a working environment, the way that we've been working, really, up until this pandemic, which is quite odd, um, was go to work at a certain time, finish work at a certain time, have this much holiday time, blah, blah, blah. And in the last 10, 15 years, the working human has sort of like blurred those lines. You know, we've sort of morphed into, if you try to call a company at one o'clock on Friday afternoon, good luck, they've all gone home for the weekend. Now it's sort of turning into... Forget calling on Friday, everybody's off for the weekend. And I'm even hearing some cultures saying they're experimenting with a four-day week. Well, don't experiment. A four-day week's been going on forever. You're just waking up to the fact that people are not productive on a Friday at all. So may as well just let them have the day off. That's what I say. Um, interestingly enough, and then I'll let you go, this week, I'm doing the first of, well, I've joined a membership. I told you that yesterday. And the law today that we're working on as homework, which would be law number five, um, is behaving myself. <laughs> what does that mean? The law of behaving yourself. Paying attention to the treatment of others, the thoughts and the feelings we have and how they affect the people around us. Um, the homework is to ask for Archangel Uriel 
to come in and guide us and to create an alarm clock when we have a negative thought or a negative feeling or a negative something that gets in the way that pulls us back. This is the power. This is the kind of what we have to understand. Going on a, I'm trying to get this right. I hear the teacher being careful with the words. Uh, going on a tangent, getting upset, getting annoyed, getting whatever you want to call it, frustrated. It's a bit like a hole in the bucket. The goodness can't stay. It sort of leaks out. You want it to, you don't want to leak out your power, leak out your goodness, leak out. You don't want all that leaking. You want to sort of bring it in. So working hard on a spiritual pathway really truly does take time. Um, the, the ego doesn't necessarily want us to grow to light the light up. I was thinking this morning about one of the homeworks we had about the puzzle. That every single piece of a puzzle is critical. Every single piece of it. Your jigsaw puzzle, I'm using that as a, um analogy because that's what we got for our homework. If there's a piece missing, everybody's eyes and attention goes to what's missing. And I was thinking about that, you know, well, wonder what's missing, what's missing, what's missing in its energy to that place that we believe is missing, but it really isn't missing. Every single part of who we are, what we are, what we're doing, the purpose and everything else is critical. You, me, your neighbor, the one across the street, down the road, across, you might not know these people, they may not be your inner circle, but what they represent and how they've shown up in your life is critical, truly, for the journey that you're on, for the journey that you're taking. And more and more and more new people will be coming in as old people leave. The human habit is that we want to hold on to what's good because there's this fear that if we don't hold on to what's good and great, and wonderful and fine, it'll be gone. We've got this overwhelming fear that things are not going to turn out. So we hold on to things when they do turn out rather than saying, well, that turned out. So something else is going to turn out. So the next thing's going to turn out. Oh, well, it always works out. It always it's always this way, this way, this way. And whether you're talking about love, the lack of a partner, money, the lack of money, uh, bills coming in. You're always going to have bills to pay. If you want things, you're going to have to pay for them. These are the kind of things I'm talking about. People are either, um, it's a consciousness, if you will. And that sometimes is what's missing. Today, the shamic message is to completely be aware of where the power's going, what you're focusing on, and where you may be not particularly leaning into something that's good for you, something that's meant to be for you. Remember, our job is not to tell other people what to do. Our job is to learn what we need and our purpose. Perhaps by the actions and the deeds that we do, we inspire people to think, I want to do some of that. I'd like to do that. Now, here's another thing that I've got to talk about. There's this thing they call imposter syndrome. When we're learning something new and we're learning something great and we're learning something different, there's this feeling that we don't really know what we're doing. I've had that where you want me to stand up and talk to how many people about what? And I'm really sure, well, OK, because in my mind, the only people qualified qualified to do this were scholars, uh, PhD people, TED Talk people, um, authors, uh, filmmakers, directors, all of these what we call famous people, people that were experienced. There you go. Well, what about showing every other ordinary person that they are actually capable of doing extraordinary things. They just believe that they couldn't or 
They just believe that they shouldn't. That's kind of the piece. When you say there's a puzzle piece missing, you've got to shine the light on the fact that <laughs> there's your power. That puzzle piece that's in the dark that you think is missing, it's not in the box or on the floor or got sucked up in the vacuum cleaner, it's actually been there all the time. you just got to shine some light on it. The awareness of shining the light on the places that are in the shadows using your shamans, your spirit guides, your angels, your archangels, the awareness of shining that light upon that space that seems to be off actually illuminates it. And when you illuminate it, you realize it really wasn't missing all along. It was there. I just pushed it into the dark for whatever reason. I hope this makes sense. I mean, sometimes I babble on and think, I don't really know what I'm talking about, but that's okay too. I love you and um, let's see, uh, let's get this out of the way and I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.